Celt and half Norse, as was Sharp, he possessed one of the subtlest and strangest minds of his time. Known for his genius, ancestral memory and creative power, in 1910 Sharp wrote, in poetic narration, the men of Lachlan occurs oftener. Sometimes the summer sailors, as the Vikings called themselves, sometimes, perhaps oftenest, the Danes. The Vikings have left numerous personal names among the islanders, notably the general term summer sailors, summer led eye, which survives as summer led. Many MacLeods and MacDonalds are called summer led. Torquil, also Torcal, Torquil, and Manus, Magnus, and in the Hebrides, surnames such as Audrum betray a Norse origin. A glance at any good map would reveal how largely the capes and promontories and headlands and small bays and havens of the west remember the lords of Suderer. We know from reading the Irish Annals that the Vikings did over winter in Ulster. The place that was earmarked in the Annals was actually Loch Ney. Now, they also talk about Viking raids which emanated from Strangford Loch. We haven't found the settlement yet, and that's not to say that it isn't there. It's to be found. I think there was an excavation carried out by Queen's University a couple of years ago, and we haven't heard any of their findings yet. A lot of activity of Vikings in and around the Strangford area. We all know about the raids on Bangor which was a huge ecclesiastical centre in Ireland. Vikings were here for quite a while. Actually, we have a Viking grave outside, just outside here. was the crow flies from this actual settlement. We'd be maybe only two men, Magnus Olafsson. He was the king of Norway. He was killed here in 1103. So there's quite a lot of Viking history in this area. Philip Campbell. I'm from Belfast originally. I'm living in a place called Anna Dorn, which is about four days camel ride from civilization. We're at Bally Dugan. We're actually at the medieval settlement, which was started construction about two years ago. The settlement itself, it's, it's not geared into one particular period in history. What we're trying to do is create somewhere that you, that you can actually do a couple of thousand years of history. You can go from the early Celt period to the early Christian period, the patrician period, what they call it here, into the Viking period. Escapism for no, number one, and also a taste of what life was really like, but without all the creature comforts that we're all used to, nowadays it'll be a real eye-opener when they come in they'll see things there'll be so many questions that'll be asked and they'll actually get a chance to actually try out some living history that we we'll have here some of it's interactive so they can have a go at it i would recommend it to everyone definitely helen and oren it's really good. It tells you a lot about the history and all together you just have a lot of fun. Mainly archery and just having a bit of fun with some of the other kids. Yeah, the bread is amazing. Come to the medieval yeah, settlement. It's, it's really good. <laughs> Uh, 
how we had a great time. It was lovely throwing the axes. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. I felt yeah. like I was in a Viking village. I thought I'd gone back in time. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's uh, great, yeah. Very friendly. People. Yeah, I sometimes wonder where these folks are now. Did they depart for good, fading into literal record? Or are they still among us, within us, even shaping our perceptions, our curiosity and wonderless? And most of all, a simpler, meaningful life of communal values. <laughs>